Introduction A while ago, in a galaxy far, far away, called Kirkland, I went to a bookstore and sat down with a notebook I had taken. I then took out my notebook and my stationery, looking very organized while doing so. Now, it was time for me to sit there, staring into my blank page, wondering what happened to the... Oh, this is gonna be so productive, I'm gonna sit there and write all these things. Eventually, nothing I had planned came to mind. Only one thing came to mind, when in doubt, Minecraft. I thought of making a project for myself in Minecraft, to add to all the other ones I never finished. This project, initially called Feudcraft, was to build a highly sanitized version of a late-stage medieval city, along with its surrounding villages. To do this, I would need to design a mod, to change the behavior of villagers and add some new items. At the same time, I was also literally beginning, to share my first ever story with the world, featuring two adventurers, from high school, defending a village from a raid. Now, just as I was about to share it, I decided to incorporate the mod into the story, making the title, wholly inaccurate. I still kept the first scene intact so you can kind of see what it was like. Don't worry, the high school isn't a big part of the story, it's more of a tribute. Now, let's go over the main subject of this bonus episode, and talk about the mod itself. Although before that, I'm going to explain for some of those new to Minecraft, or simply those that took a long break, the basic mechanics of villages in Minecraft. Chapter 1, Villagers and Friends. I should mention that this mod, along with the story itself, takes place in Minecraft 1.14, so a lot of this information might be outdated, or maybe it's perfect I dunno. Without further ado, let's discuss the key characteristics of villagers and some of their mates. A villager is a passive mob, a type of mob that doesn't attack the player under any conditions. Other mob types include neutral, and hostile. They spawn naturally in five biomes, desert, plains, savanna, snowy tundra and taiga. That being said, they can also be spawned by the player in any biome. Seven of these biomes, including the ones mentioned before, along with jungle and swamp, have outfits that villagers spawn wearing. Although neutral, they can still interact with the player, via trade. When trading, they can either buy something with, or sell something for, emeralds, the medium of exchange in the village economy. In order to trade with the player, they need to acquire a job. Upon employment, their outfit will be modified to make them look cooler and more distinguishable. Every job will require a job block, that the villager must claim in order to be employed. Different job blocks claimed result in different professions, which result in different outfits and trades. As the player trades with the villager, the villager will level up, unlocking new trades. The five levels are, novice, apprentice, journeyman, expert and master. In addition to job blocks, all yeah. villagers also claim beds, where they sleep at night. When there are more beds than villagers, they will talk about creating new occupants for the village. Yeah. Yeah. A village, to put it simply, is defined as being the area around a claimed bed and a bell. If they witness a villager dying, they will wait 3 minutes before. In addition to baby villagers, iron golems may be summoned into a village. We will discuss them later. For now, let's talk about this guy, the wandering trader. There is no passion, there is no vision, there is no aggression. But at least there's trader llama. I think he has lots of potential, but he is so useless. He has some cool attributes, like turning invisible when it's night time. Now, let's get to Iron Golems. They are neutral mobs that only attack the player when attacked or if the player is not popular among the villagers. 
Iron Golems also pick fights with several mobs. Most importantly, Illager variants, Zombie variants, Skeleton variants and Witches. These are all hostile mobs that will attack the player, even without provocation. Several of them also attack villagers. Another mob that golems clap are spiders, which will become important later. Chapter 2. Disturbers of the Peace. What about the villagers themselves? Can they be attacked? Yes, there are two circumstances under which the village can be under attack, zombie sieges and illager raids. Additionally, the player can also attack the village, but I doubt anyone would ever do so. Let's now talk about the enemies in more details, then we'll get to the attacks. Firstly, Zombies. A zombie is a hostile mob that is only active in the shade, as they burn during sunlight. They can't swim and if they are in deep water, will sink to the floor. Zombies have two other variants, Husks and Drowned. Husks are bigger zombies that don't burn in the sun but also cannot swim, unlike Drowned. Drowned are water zombies that can swim and even wield tridents, but also burn in daylight. Husks and zombies that are in the water for too long will drown and transform into zombies and drowned respectively. Secondly, Illagers. Illager is a category given to many hostile mobs that all attack the village in what is called a raid. In the deep dark layer, of the Woodland Mansion. Spawn Vindicators and Evokers. Vindicators are quick and handy with an axe. Evokers use magic to attack or to summon little demons called Vexes. Then, there is a pillager outpost, where spawn the pillagers, crossbow wielding outlaws. Every now and again, a captain will spawn. They may also spawn in illager patrols, always having a captain present. There is also another mob, which we will discuss during the next portion on attacks. 1. Zombie Sieges During a zombie siege, all zombie variants, including the little ones, will attack a village until daytime arrives. If a zombie gets a villager, the villager will become a zombie villager, but still retain their profession. They can deconvert with a potion and an apple. Additionally, the player may also equip them with armor to strengthen them. 2. Raids. If the player kills a captain, the player will have the bad omen effect. The next village the player enters will be attacked in a raid. The illagers will arrive in 3, 5 or even 7 waves, to bring the village to ruin. The special illager that we discussed earlier is a ravager, an absolute beast of a unit. Which is also a company and help them out, but do not attack villagers. The quality of their weapons will depend on the level of bad omen the player has. A raid ends either in victory, or in defeat. If there's a victory, the villagers will name the player hero and launch fireworks. Otherwise, the illagers will celebrate theirs. <laughs> now that we've covered the basics of how villagers and villages work in Minecraft Vanilla, let's talk about the mod itself and what it changes and adds to the main game. Chapter 3, Get to the Modder. Since there are changes to a multitude of features, I will split this portion into a few sections, each detailing a particular feature. Section A, Wondering what to do with this guy. Uh -huh. The Wandering Trader can now interact with the player, offering them quests, such as attacking a woodland mansion or ocean monument. If the player respects the Trader's Llamas, <coughs> they can form a friendship, and the Wanderer will join them on these missions. If he joins the missions, he can provide a health boost to the player, and his llamas can be used as additional storage. During a mission, if a player puts down a bed, the trader will claim it and stay around it. Since they are wandering, traders, they will wander around if the player is too far away. The adventure is only complete once the player and the trader return to the village of his origin and sleep. Afterwards, the trader can continue to go on his merry adventures, but if the player names him, he can return. I haven't quite thought this through completely, but hopefully you get a sense of the idea I have. Section B, my precious. I should mention something about these guys, they can be really stupid. When they see a mob they want to attack, they will simply walk to no end to try and get them, even if they take a long walk away from any villager that they have to protect. They also attack zombie villagers, which makes sense, 
but I do want to change that. In this mod, a golem doesn't simply walk around, trying to bash everything in sight and getting lost. Instead, they will focus on villagers themselves, to protect them from danger. Secondly, if the conditions are right, the golem will not hurt a zombie villager, but instead carry them over for an exorcism. More on that later. Section C, C, is for city. Two distinct villages can be combined together to form a city. Let me explain. In this mod, every village has, in charge, a cleric, whose exact jobs we'll get to later. Additionally, if the player builds a cathedral, there can also be, a bishop. The player can meet up a cleric and bishop, perform a ceremony, and now the cleric's village belongs to the city. We will talk more about these fine men later. Another thing, every village also has a default mine, where nobody works yet. Just some notes, which should be pretty obvious. A city can and usually does have, more than one village, but a village cannot belong to more than one city. In order to name the cities and villages, the player must speak to the clerics and bishops in charge. If the player desires, they can build a little, town, area around the cathedral. Villages within the same city can help each other in times of, trouble. Section D, D, is for disturbers of the peace. Instead of just a, captain, in a patrol, illagers will also have a, king, who rests upon an outpost, guarded by pillagers. If the player kills a king, the raid following will be of the highest difficulty. A raid, if proving to be difficult, can be surrendered, if the player plants a white banner and right clicks three times. The villagers will remain alive, but the village itself now belongs to the illagers and must be fought for. If the player wishes to enter the village without being attacked, they must pay a sum of emeralds to the owners. <coughs> now, the vexes. Vexes no longer harm the player, but can hurt them in other ways. Vexes are basically spies that guide the illagers to their targets. They can also place and replace blocks that guard the villagers or the player. To be an extra pain, they can also dig blocks right underneath the player if they are too high, or even worse, they dig up to a certain extent. Make sure you bring a water bucket. Section E, E, is for illiterate. This is the section where we go over all the individual villagers with their professions, job blocks, and unique features. Before we continue, I'd like to mention, while most of these villager professions are in Minecraft vanilla, some of them I added to make sure everything made sense. Another thing, before we get to the individual villagers, there are some changes I made to all the villagers, so let's discuss those right now. General. In addition to a bed and job block, villagers will now also claim a chest as their own. Ah. If the player loots the chest, they will receive wanted status until they throw it out. The only villager that does not claim a chest as his own is the fisherman. Ah. Some jobs also require the villager to claim a crafting table, which can be shared with others. The trades that a villager has will not depend on his experience, but only on his profession, and the resources that he has access to. They can trade either with the player, or with each other to earn emeralds or buy commodities. Villagers are now affected by hunger and taste, fashion taste. As such, every villager will buy food, mainly bread from default farmers, but can randomly buy something else for fun. For fashion, each villager will buy clothing from the Lethawicca. The clothes themselves, do wear off as time passes. In fact, every 60 seconds, a minute passes. Every seventh day, they attend church, where the cleric leads a prayer. Every fourth seventh, or 28th day, the villagers pay 10% of their income in tithing. If the village is in a city, the librarian will take a census, recording villagers, jobs and beds. The cleric then takes the census and tithe to the bishop. Some villagers only work if their job is in demand. Otherwise they spend their time babysitting or riding on golems, or even playing games with each other. If an unemployed villager lives in a city, they will look to tame horses. In fact, some jobs are only available once the village belongs to a city. Now, let's go over the jobs one by one. Individual. When a villager claims both a compost and a crafting table, he becomes a farmer. A default farmer will farm wheat with his hands and sell the bread. They can, on special occasions, sell the wheat itself. If the player is a lord, they can assign the farmer into farming a specific crop of their choice. The farmers will then sell the produce of said crop. 
If the village contains a butcher, the farmers can be specialized into farming an animal. In this case, they will buy whatever the animal's kinky food is. This is why some farmers will sell the wheat. Sheep can also be cared for, but not by farmers. They sell the excess animals to the butcher. When a villager claims both a barrel and a crafting table, he becomes a fisherman. Fishermen buy logs, planks and sticks from lumberjacks and string from hunters. They combine these to make fishing rods, which they fishily use to fish for fishy fish. The fish they sell to butchers. When they run out of sticks, they convert from planks and then from logs. Fishermen also raise the odds of a trader spawning in the village, since they are good mates. When a villager claims a campfire, or something, I nearly wrote vampire, he becomes a hunter. Hunters buy spears from weaponsmiths and bows and arrows from fletchers. They will use these to hunt for spiders and untamed wolves that might harm sheep. I should mention, spiders in this mod also drop leather. The leather and string they collect, they sell to leather workers and fishermen respectively. If possible, they will buy camouflage outfits from the leather worker. When a villager claims a sawmill, he becomes a lumberjack. Lumberjacks buy axes from toolsmiths, which they use to chop down and replace trees of a particular type. Their tree of choice depends on their biome, but a lord can assign them to a particular type of wood. They sell the wood in the form of logs, planks, sticks, in the ratio 1 to 4 to 8. Their customers are fishermen, armorers, toolsmiths, weaponsmiths and fletchers. If they live in a city, they also sell the paper they make from the wood to cartographers and librarians. When a villager claims a furnace, he becomes a miner, not in that way. Miners buy pickaxes and spades from toolsmiths. They will, by default, mine in the village's naturally generated mine, unless the lord tells them where and how to mine. If they come across any gravel they immediately convert it into flint. Their trades are complex. They sell flint to fletchers, cobble to toolsmiths and weaponsmiths, also iron, which they sell to armorers and shepherds as well. Finally, they sell the cobble, along with polished forms of andesite, granite and diorite, to the mason. All the other ores they come across, they ignore for the player to pick up. When a villager claims a loom, he becomes a shepherd. Shepherds buy wheat from farmers and iron from miners. They make shears so they can shear the sheep that they breed with wheat. They sell the wool to lethal workers and any excess sheep to butchers. Wool is the only item that can make camouflage clothing, which indirectly keeps sheep safe. When a villager claims a smoker, he becomes a butcher. Butchers buy excess animals from farmers and shepherds, along with battle axes from weaponsmiths. They will delete nature's contract with the animal and sell the cooked meat to any customers. The leather they sell to lethal workers and librarians, if in a city. Additionally, if they are feeling generous, they can give the meat to tamed dogs. The next four villagers, we will discuss next to each other, because they have a lot in common, so it would be useful. When a villager claims a blast furnace, or a smithing table, or a grindstone, or a fletching table, he becomes an armorer, or a toolsmith, or a weaponsmith, or a fletcher. Now let's discuss the trades, where they overlap and diverge. Also, there is a special feature that all of them have, hence me grouping them together. Let's begin. Armorers buy only iron from the miner, which toolsmiths and weaponsmiths also buy. Additionally they also buy cobble and wood from lumberjacks, the latter also bought by fletchers, who also buy flint from miners and string from hunters. When the last three run out of sticks, they convert the planks, and then logs. Now their sellings. Armorers sell armor and shields to knights, who also buy swords from weaponsmiths, who further sell battle axes to butchers and spears to hunters, who also buy bows and arrows from fletchers. <laughs> when presented by the player with the materials required, they can offer a discount, or do a sale, unless the mineral in question only amounts to one in number. They can also combine enchantments for a few emeralds, without costing the player any levels. When a villager claims a cauldron, he becomes a lethal worker. Lethal workers buy, well, leather, from butchers and hunters, along with wool from shepherds. They can create clothing for the entire village. Additionally, hunters can also buy a special camouflage outfit, which strengthens their hunting. 
Just a note, hunters do also buy regular clothes, since they don't always want to be camouflaged. They also sell saddles and horse outfits to knights. To close this little part off. When a villager claims a stonicata, he becomes a mason. Masons buy stone varieties from miners and sell the end products of stairs, slabs, walls in the ratio 2 to 3 to 3. The villagers so far have been peasants and handicraftsmen, of which only the mason does not trade with another villager. The next few will consist of city employees, who generally do not trade, but instead earn their income through a service. When a villager claims a brewing stand, he becomes a cleric. Clerics, along with farmers, must be present for a place to be a village, since they are the only ones that can summon emeralds ex nihilo. They are responsible for ringing the bell every seventh day for prayers. If there is any villager without money, clerics buy food for them. Also, if there is a cleric in a village, no other villager will claim a brewing stand, since there can only be one. If the village is in a city, the cleric takes the census from the librarian to the bishop, accompanied by knights. If paid by the player, they can rename the village. They do sell one item, but only to players, bells. When a cleric has a special meetup with a bishop, his village becomes part of the latter's city. In fact, let's go there. When a villager claims a cathedra, he becomes a bishop. Technically speaking, any space around a cathedra can be a cathedral, but come on, be creative, heretic. If the player builds a golem in front of a bishop, they can achieve the title of lord. Lords have certain privileges that we discussed earlier, and also receive a portion of the tithe paid by villagers. They also have other abilities. They can cure zombie villagers, restoring their human form, and they can limit the influence of vexes in a raid. Additionally, the villagers that we will discuss from now on, can only be unlocked in a particular city. Just to be clear, when a villager leaves the city, they lose their job, so don't try that here. When a villager claims a cartography table, he becomes a cartographer. Cartographers buy paper from lumberjacks, which they use to make maps to keep track of the city and its villages. The player can buy special maps from them, like an ocean monument map or woodland mansion map for quests. When a villager claims a lectern, he becomes a librarian. Librarians buy paper from lumberjacks and leather from butchers and hunters. They combine them to make books, which they use to keep record of the city. This includes the census and events of the villages. If the player pays them emeralds, they can combine two enchanted books at no experience cost to the player. Finally, when a villager claims an untamed horse, he becomes a knight. Knights buy armor and shields from armorers and swords from weaponsmiths. They also buy saddle and horse armor from lethal workers for their horses. They protect the village from threats, including a player with wanted status. In case you're wondering, a golem will also attack a player with wanted status, so don't think about it. Conclusion Before we end the video and get back to the main story, I would like to mention a couple of things. First, as you can tell, I haven't fully worked out the logistics of the mod, but just have a vague idea so far. If there are any updates or anything I missed, I will put those in the description, along with the timestamps. Second, I probably won't be able to make the mod, since I don't know how to make mods and am doing a few other things at the moment. That being said, I will be doing another bonus episode for this season, a Q&A, so feel free to leave your questions on this post. Thank you for sticking through this mod showcase and let's get back to the story.